Hello viewers, this is Jake and I'm bringing you another video tutorial series, this time on Go and AngularJS. To get started, we need to have Go installed and configured correctly. We won't be doing that in this video because the Go website does a good job of explaining that. Instead, let's check to make sure that we have it configured properly. So open a command window and first echo Go path. In Windows you use percent symbols, in Linux you're going to use dollar sign. Um, if that returns a path, then that means you have it configured correctly. Um, the Go path is where Go sticks all of its dependencies and it's where you're going to code. Um, we also need to make sure that we have Go on our path. So if you just run the Go command and it says anything other than command not found, that means we're good. Okay, so now let's get some actual code. If you type go get and then the name of a repository, like this one, it will actually go and download the source code for you. And it'll stick that in your Go path. Uh, now I got kind of a, a warning here because my web app tutorial actually has no source in this base directory, but that's okay. So I have my Go path pointed to my desktop, so as you saw there, uh, it popped up a folder, and in that folder I have source, and then all the way down here I have my actual uh, Gulling tutorial source code. So we're actually going to use this and let's look at tutorial one. As you can see this is a simple project. We have a single main.go file and we have a directory web that has a single HTML file in it. So let's open this main.go file and I'm going to give you a uh, brief rundown on what every Go program is like. So first we have a package declaration statement, which is a lot like Java's package declaration. Um, this package happens to be main. Main is a special package for Go in that it can create executables. Next up we have import statement, which again is like Java or like a Python import statement. Uh, although we'll see in later videos that the tooling around Go's import statements is a lot more powerful. And finally we have a function declaration which happens to be the main entry point to this program and uh, so yeah let's go check out what this program does so if we open a command window here where our main.go file is and we run go run main.go we see we're running on port 80 so if we fire up chrome and we type in localhost we can see it's actually serving us something. So, uh, if we remember in that web directory, there was a single file called test.html. If I click on that, uh, I get this test page, which I put together, uh, which shows that Bootstrap is working, Font Awesome is working, and then if this works, then Angular is working. Uh, so, that's just a quick test to make sure that we have uh, internet access and you know everything is, is hunky dory. Uh, but let's go back to the Go file and see what's going on. As I mentioned before, this is our main entry point. So when we run go run on this file, it will start in this function. Um, you see here we have some command line flags that I haven't used yet. Uh, the default for the port is 80 and the default for the directory is web. Uh, next we have an HTTP handler uh, being set up. So this is a lot like any other web frameworks uh, URL routing so here we are taking the root route and we are giving it a file server uh, this is a built-in file server in Go it basically takes whatever's on the path and it looks for a file in the directory you gave it and we gave it web so that might make a little bit more sense now um, we have a web folder here which is serving up all the content inside of it so if we were to say create another file in here and go back and refresh we can see it's actually serving up the current content uh, and then we have a log message here which it printed out uh, the log message automatically uh, prepends the current date and time which is nice to have when you're running a server uh, we have a just a sprintf which is a lot like Python's uh, format so it's a, a string format 
So that creates our, our host, which is talking on localhost on whatever port was specified. And then listen serve is our blocking call, which go then goes ahead and uh, executes and, and you know does its stuff. So that's basically it. So if you enjoyed this introductory video, uh, please like and subscribe. Uh, if I've missed anything that uh, if anything's confusing, uh, put a comment in and I'll come back and I'll answer questions or I might make another video if it seems like something fundamental that I've missed. Uh, so feel free to leave comments. Uh, so yeah, thanks for watching.